Hey guys and gals, Nary here from Drake Wing Game, and it's something you know on Twitter, the Gaming Drag. Today I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Minotaur Hotel. So y'all, before we jump into it, just wanted to let y'all know that our Patreon is now up for as little as $5. Y'all can help support the channel, get some awesome rewards like permanent access to our community Discord server, and full access to upcoming Not Safe for Work videos. Anyway y'all, let's go ahead and jump right back in. Alarm chain, you are up, and let's go. Alright. Another bite of the donut travels down his throat, and Luke glances over once more. The large trucker scratches his exposed crack, unbothered by the fact that others are around. The sight scratches Luke's itch, too, arousing him even more. Oh my god, he's got that sub. Oh my god, he's got that fucking. Ah, Confederacy belt buckle. Of fucking course he does. His donut dips into the coffee, and Luke glances over to the other side this time. An older trucker wasting no time scarfing down a burger. His truck uniform hugs his belly tight before leading up to his unbuttoned scruffy collar. The griffin tugs at his own fly, making his tent more obvious. Now to catch either now to catch either man's attention, Luke turns his head just a bit and stares at the hulkish man. Not long after the man peers back and peers back over and meets his gaze, and grunts and looks back to his paper. Luke looks back down at his food, then over to stare again. The man lowers his paper a bit and takes a longer look at the eagle. He smirks before pulling his paper up again. Two minutes pass before Luke uh, takes another look and catches the man looking him down before winking at him. Luke lightly kicks the man's foot and the brute's knees are flexibly spread apart wider. He eyes the tent hidden below the counter's edge. The griffin has it down to an art at this point. Luke chuckles quietly, finishes up his meal and looks over to the bathroom. A squat building across the parking lot. He looks back at the brute, tilts his head in the direction of the building and scoots out to head over. Discreet and simple. He listens and hears two deep voices murmuring right behind him. Eagle eyes and hearing are something that he finds useful even after his time in the military. Luke waits outside by the dumpster until he sees the trucker making his way to the restroom. After a minute, Luke follows. Avert your eyes. Oh my god. Men and their unsightly wants. Many are the seductive sins, unrestrained deeds, disgraceful desires, and fleeting pleasures they embrace under cover of darkness. We can imagine what such fiery men do, and what regrets take them when the beating of their hearts is no longer the only song thundering in their ears. I'm afraid for this one it will take a while for that song to end, for more men find their way into the restroom and there they dawdle. As for us witnesses, there is nothing to do but twiddle our thumbs until well past sundown. Too often nothing can be done to avert a man from his regrettable choices. The silence of one's mind often acts as a shield. His mind must be quiet, focused only in pure mechanical perfection while the scene unfolds around him. Smell of detergent, a dull throbbing want on the arch of his back, his eyes gone softly, gone soft and needy, wanting guidance, a reassuring hand. Here and there, between grunts, unwelcome memories intruding, of similar escapades, but worse yet, familiar faces of the dearly departed. His beak with a little nick and his tail bent at the end. What would he think seeing Lucas like this? What would he think seeing Lucas like this, face against the tiled floor? Did he imagine something like this when he first heard the news? Perhaps he did, even if Luke wasn't like this when it all happened. He might have guessed in a sick twist of fate. Luke tries to push these thoughts away. This is not the time. Let me enjoy it. Luke arrives at the cafeteria and asks for a cup of coffee. The look of disgust in the cashier's eyes makes it clear he knows exactly what Luke was up to and that he's not welcome to drip cum on their floor. The cashier slides a styrofoam cup over, even if Luke didn't order it to go. He takes it and goes outside to sit down beside the dumpster and look at the stars. His shaking hands spill half the cup's contents. The song, the singing, the stinging heat doesn't even register. The griffin tells himself it'll all be fine once he's tracing the constellations. He'll feel like a kid, and it'll be like being back at Cape Canaveral all over again. He's about to turn the corner when the cigarette stench hits him. The idea of being seen right now brings him no spark of excitement at all. Were he more in control of himself, he would have spun on his heel and walked away. Yep. Yep. But his mind is slow, his legs move on their own, and he stumbles on, on none other than John enjoying a cigarette. It's dark. Maybe he won't see how much of a disgrace I am, thinks the griffin, and the smoke might hide the scent. Maybe he won't recognize me in the dark. Wait, hold on, water time. Alright. But it only takes a moment for John to figure out who it is. Luke, is that you? I thought you had gone already. What are you doing here? Luke has to piece together Jean's answer, then muster together a response, word by word. I wasn't feeling... I wasn't feeling too good. I wasn't feeling... T I wasn't feeling too good, so I took a nap in the car. I just woke up and went for a cup of coffee. Is that so? The griffin's voice sounds scratchy and gravelly. 
He can't stop himself from coughing his lungs out. Uh, funny, I had noticed your car was still parked, but I didn't see you there when I passed by. He takes a long drag from his cigarette and lets his words linger. Luke sits on the ground and shrinks into himself as he cradles his coffee. He dares not look at John, at the silhouette of the, this, at that silhouette in the burning tip of the cigarette shining. It seems like you're catching a cold, too. You sound, pardon my bluntness, like shit. Luke sips on his coffee, hoping it will give him enough time to recompose himself. But silence lingers, gnawing away at him. John holds out for an answer until it becomes too much for the griffin. And what are you doing here? Weren't you supposed to have left by now? Oh, my ride had a few issues. He'll take one more hour or so to arrive. So here I am, waiting, watching truckers come and go. Lots of commotion tonight. The griffin's mind crashes and sways like the waves. He remembers how pleasant it was talking with John before. He just wishes he had that again. Like earlier in the day, Luke acts before thinking. As the words leave his mouth, he already regrets them. I can give you a ride again. You're good company. I enjoyed the talk. How about that? Luke's stomach sinks, however, as he realizes there will be no way to hide how much he's stinking. John will learn, if he hasn't already, if he hasn't already what Luke is. Showing off his sexual conquests used to make him proud, but not tonight. Very kind of you, buddy, but I'm going back the way I came. Plus, you look like you really need a rest. Do you remember what I told you? There's a hotel up ahead. Supposedly, it's reopening. Maybe you could stay a while. It seems like you need it. Is there someone waiting for you back home? No, I live on my own. Any reason to return quickly? A job? Family? Obligations? Luke goes back to his coffee and John takes the hint. Maybe I should, yeah. I sure could use some peace and quiet. A change of scenery. There's also a shower here. It's for employees, but I'm buddies with the owner. I have the key with me. I'm sure he'd find be fine with you using it. Yeah, I could use a shower. John hands him the key. I suppose I should give you privacy now. John stomps his cigar. Actually, if you don't mind, would you talk with me for a while longer? Do you know about the constellations, the names and their stories? Would you be okay if we talked about them? Like, look, there's Orion. It's hard seeing John's face, but even if his eyes are covered in shadows, there is a glimmer. Sure, Luke. I know how to read the stars. It's useful. I'll tell you all about them. But you promised me you're going to take a break. Whatever you want, as long as you keep talking. Much has changed since Luke was a boy. No more sleeping on the porch in a pile with his brothers. No more listening to the radio after Dad got back from work. No more stargazing with Peter. He's a grown man now, covered in sex and knee-deep in self-loathing, struggling not to spill coffee from his styrofoam cup while sitting beside a dumpster. The shower will wash away all the gunk, but John's voice cleans his mind. When Luke closes his eyes, he can pretend it's Peter, his brother. The griffin struggles to not fall asleep. When John's ride arrives, the two say goodbye. It's laconic, even sorrowful. Luke takes his shower and naps in his car, looking out to the stars through the windshield. He's too tired to drive right now. Tonight, he holds on to the voice of his brother, like he's still a boy. When morning arrives, he'll be a man again, on his way to that hotel he promised to check into. Luke adjusts the rearview mirror. His eyes flash for a moment. He doesn't appreciate seeing himself like that, coming out of nowhere. Mirrors, he knows, are dangerous. The engines rev once, twice, thrice for good measure. Luke's claws dig into the steering wheel's leather. The early morning sunlight coming through the windshield warms his chest and grazes his beak. He takes off. Sweet mechanical memory. It hardly takes a minute for the griffin to start humming a tune. A fine jazz hit. Washing off all that gunk, good night's sleep in the back seat, and John's talk got him back up and running. Yeah, he could use some time in different scenery. John was right. It's not like he has anything better to do or a job. Thinking, so, y'all, you know, water time. Hmm. The scenery shifts quickly, just as easily as Luke jumps from one tune to the next. He speeds up until the car is trembling and its individual parts are shaking, threatening to come undone. More. More of this sweet danger. And he would have gone further were it not for the blocky shape about a minute up ahead. How did he not notice it sooner in this flat and flat desert? He takes his foot off the gas pedal and allows inertia to carry him forward. He's still going fast enough that when he takes a right turn into the parking lot, the car swerves and the griffin is pushed against the door. He cackles with his forehead pressed against the window. The car comes to a halt precisely over the line separating two rows of parking slots. Luke has broken his record by using not one, not two, not three, but six spaces simultaneously. How the fuck? His car's stereo still blares jazz when he, when he steps out of it. He slams the door to the beat of the song. The tune is no more, but, but the griffin crosses the wide expanse of the parking lot, still humming the song, timing his footsteps to the beat. He climbs the steps, clinking his claws on the handrail. 
The doors swing open as he lays his weight on them, and then he seals the deal with a final push that slams him into the walls behind. Luke's arrival is like a judge's gavel, silencing the world around him, and in the ensuing emptiness, his string still follows the jazz beat, his stride still follows the jazz beat. Ever since he set out earlier in the morning, he had this contagious spring in his step, and at any given moment he could burst out in laughter or dance. But now, as his eyes adapt to the newfound indoor lighting, and he sees the man behind the reception desk, Luke's attitude changes. Luke takes off his glasses. Hey, you! Uh, yeah. Yes, sir. What the fuck happened to your face? Did a dog chew on it? Excuse me? You heard me. What happened to your face? What kind of fancy thing did you, did you do to get an LED in your skull like that? The Minotaur looks down, stuttering out an audible response. He bites his lip hard, and a rivulet of cold sweat runs down his back. Jesus, if you want to look like some cartoon character, you don't have to rip half your face off. Luke's stride covers the distance between them before the Minotaur has a chance to think up an answer. The Griffin puts both of his hands on the desk and leans forward. He keeps his gaze locked on the Minotaur's empty eye socket, examining the flickering flame inside. What weird little thing you are! What even are you? The Minotaur looks away and covers his face without a second thought. His entire back is covered in cold sweat now. I'm sorry, I know I am. In a flash, Luke's contained laughter bursts out like a dam. Ha! <laughs> I'm just messing with you, buddy. You should have seen your face right there. Now, that must have been one nasty fight you got into, but I've seen and been through worse. I know how it is. You wouldn't know it's sin, but as I don't have any scars to show, but yeah, I've been through some shit. Even been blown away once or twice. You know, these old timey stick style grenades. Hurt like a bitch, and there was that one time, and. Oh, look at me. I almost went on one of my crambles. I could spend all day talking about it. So it's such a fine piece of prime Angus steak as yourself. Well, it doesn't matter. I want to tell you, I want to book a room here. This place must be pretty good, right? The Minotaur stumbles at the mention of the hotel. His gaze shows a blossoming warmth despite all Luke's thrown at his face. Yes, it's quite a marvelous hotel, and I can guarantee it will improve. It's very empty now, but it's sure to change in just a few days. I'll hold you to that. So where do I sign? What are your rates? Oh, yes, just sign here in the ledger and fill in these forms. This is our soft opening. We won't charge you, good sir. Oh, so this place is fancy and cheap? What's the catch, then? I'm sorry to say that there is no catch. This place is a mission, you see, and, well, we don't ever charge much. A mission? Is some sort of charity? I suppose that's a way to put it, yes. At least it was good for a while. It's up to the owner. Luke has been checked into the hotel. You can see your current guests on the guest screen in the menu, or clicking on the ledger icon. Luke hands over the forms. The Minotaur takes a cursory glance at them. You know, water time. Down, down, down. Mr. Lucas Walker, born in October 1923. Your looks are quite misleading. I'd never, I'd never have guessed your age. You'd even be old enough to... Oh, you know how it is. Griffins don't age like humans do, and I'm from a fine lineage, you see. I'm 3.125% Greek, and my papa was just like me in that regard. Barely aged. Oh, I see. I'm sorry, I admit I've never met a griffin before. I don't know how it is, I'm afraid. Well, I can say the name. I never saw a Minotaur myself. I thought you guys were just some old Greek legend. A Cretan. Excuse me. A Cretan story, not Greek. A Greece didn't exist when it all happened. About 3,000 years before Christ. Uh, forgive my impertinence. Here's your key, Mr. Walker. Your room is in the third floor up the staircase down the hall. I hope you have an enjoyable stay here with us. Well, I'm sure I will, and I hope I get to have a taste of Angus beef someday. Chapter 6, Housewarming. It has been an hour or so since Asterion left the lounge. The Minotaur had led you back to the hotel's hearth to check, on, check in on it. Everything seemed to be in working condition. You both did the rounds and inspected the hotel. The rooms, the stairways, the lobby, every lamp and switch on the door you could find. Some of the walls were still cracked, windows were smashed, and there was water damage here and there. The site displeased Asterion, but the hotel seemed to be repa repairing itself at an impressive rate. You both stopped at the lounge to take a break and celebrate a job well done. Asterion served your favorite drink again, and, with your permission, took a glass of wine himself. After a brief chat, you checked the time only to notice your phone's battery was long dead. But the hotel has power now. You wished for a socket to plug your phone in, and after, it after a blanket materialized before you. Asterion was eager to resume the inspection. You were enjoying the break, so you let him continue without you. The time alone proved beneficial. So much has happened in the last few days. Meeting the old man, finding the hotel and the Minotaur inside, the altercation with Argos. 
All right, I'm going to go ahead and pause it right there. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and that notification bell. And check out our Patreon if you can. You can if it always. Check out our Patreon if you can. It always helps. Anyway, I love you all. i see you on the next video. Bye-bye.